Hi, and welcome to this video. If you're new to my channel, my name's Gracie, and I like to make clothes. In today's video, I'm going to be making a winter skirt. The process will not be dissimilar to that of making my orange wool A-line skirt, which you can see up here, but I'm going to winterize it because I often hear people saying that they can't wear skirts in the winter because their legs get cold, and I get that, but there are definitely ways to make skirts super warm so that you can wear them, especially in the winter, and they'll keep your legs nice and cozy. And that's what I'm going to do for this skirt. I'm going to be making kind of an Edwardian, Victorian, turn of the century-ish skirt, except mine's going to be knee length because that's what I prefer, but these techniques could be used for other periods and other skirt silhouettes. It's a pretty universal technique, and yeah, with that, let's get to the project. The first step in making this skirt was to cut out the pieces. Because I wanted this skirt to have more volume than a basic A-line skirt, I used my pattern to cut out an extra panel for the sides of the skirt. First, I cut my panels from the cotton flannel. This fabric serves to add extra insulation to the skirt while protecting my legs from the sometimes scratchy wool fashion fabric of the skirt. I used my cotton flannel panels as patterns to cut the wool, being careful to match the plaid at the back of the skirt and on the mirrored panels. There are methods to pattern match a plaid around an entire skirt, but I had neither the will nor sufficient fabric, so symmetrical was as best as I could do. Next, I cut long strips on the bias or diagonal from some scraps of beige wool. This will form the hem facing for the skirt. When I cut a hem facing, I often cut more than I end up needing because the bias strips can stretch and fit a curved hem, and it's better to have too much fabric than not enough. This style of hem facing is a good way to use up random scraps from other projects. In this case, extra wool left over from a medieval gown that would have otherwise taken up space. With the fabric cut, the next step was to begin flatlining each panel. Flatlining a winter skirt adds both warmth and keeps the lining fabric smooth and neat against the fashion fabric. To flatline, I smoothed the flannel over each wool panel, pinning from the center and smoothing the fabric as I went. The goal is to avoid bubbles in the flat lining, and if the edges of each panel don't line up perfectly, that's fine. Next, I stitched around each panel about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric within the seam allowance, securing the flat lining flannel to the wool. Once each panel was flat lined, I began constructing the skirt. Because of the thickness of the fabrics that I used, each panel was stitched together using a plain seam, right sides together, as opposed to a French seam that I might otherwise use. I added a pocket to one, side, to one of the side front seams, and then stitched a rectangle of wool to the center back seam to serve as a placket closure. Once the placket was added, the back seam was stitched up carefully, ensuring that the plaid on either side of the seam matched. With the skirt constructed, I began to work on the hem. First, I stitched together all of the strips of bias cut wool, then ironed under one edge of my long bias strip. After evening out the hem of the skirt, I stitched the facing to the hem, right sides together, and then turned the facing around so that it was flush with the interior of the skirt. The facing was tacked down to the flannel lining, and I was careful to avoid catching the wool in my stitches here. Not only are hem facings one of my favorite ways to finish a, seat, a skirt hem, they also create a smooth visual transition between the lining and fashion fabric in a skirt like this one. Because both the wool and the flannel are printed, the hem facing prevents the patterns from clashing and hides glimpses of the lining as the skirt swishes as I walk. Next, I stitched down the seam allowance around the placket closure using whip stitches. 
These seam allowances will host the snaps that keep the skirt closed, and to do so they need to be secured in place. If my fabric was more prone to fraying, I would have added a facing around the edges of the placket, but the stitches securing the flat lining to each panel serve as somewhat of a guard against fraying. I might eventually stitch down each seam allowance on this skirt, but I didn't have time to do so before releasing this video. I'm not sure how necessary it will be. As I was adding the hem facing and finishing the placket closure, I realized just how heavy this skirt is. After all, it consists of about six yards in total of wool and cotton flannel, neither of which are lightweight fabrics. To prevent the waistband from warping, I decided to reinforce it with a piece of cotton twill tape. I pinned the waistband to the skirt, ensuring that the center of the waistband aligned with the center front of the skirt, and pinned the cotton twill tape such that it would just be caught in the seam attaching the skirt to the waistband. The front panel of the skirt was pinned to the waistband without any pleats or tucks, but the side and back panels required pleating to fit to the waistband. I personally prefer to have volume in the back of my skirts with a smooth front, which gives a somewhat Victorian silhouette. Using a ruler to carefully measure my pleats, I added two pleats to each side of the back of the skirt. Then, I stitched the waistband to the skirt, ensuring that the twill tape was caught in my seam and going slowly so as not to overwhelm my fickle sewing machine with too many layers of fabric. The waistband was folded and stitched to the interior of the skirt using whip stitches, creating a nice clean finish. Then, I stitched the sides of the waistband closed as invisibly as I could before adding hooks and eyes to the waistband and snaps to the placket as a, as a closure. On my previous skirt video, some people wondered how the placket works to keep the skirt closed, and essentially the placket itself acts as a modesty panel, covering the gap in the skirt while also supporting the snaps. The snaps are secured and then the waistband is closed with hooks and eyes in this case, though it could also close with a button if I so chose. And there you have it, the skirt is complete and I think it was a success. There is one thing where I believe I need to add another uh, hook and eye to the waistband, simply because the skirt is so heavy that I'm concerned that the waistband might further warp out of shape if I do not add more support to it. Other than that though, I'd say it was a pretty good success. If I stand up here, you'll probably be able to see how long it is. Um, yeah, it's about knee length. It has a very nice shape. It can flare out like this, it twirls, but whew, <laughs> I am on an antique chest, so I don't want to twirl too much in case I like fall through. <laughs> but yeah, pretty pleased with it. Um, yeah, thank you for sticking this long through the video, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Bye!